Welcome back. Uh, as you can see, we have a little uh, change in venue. Uh, not by choice, but it is what it is. Uh, for this week's fly, we're going to do the little original pattern. Uh, this is the Wasted White Girl. I uh, came up with this one a couple months ago and finally got all the tweaks and everything out that I wanted. So everything looks, everything's swimming pretty well. This one's kind of unique and I'll explain this further as we go along. As to where this actually will ride upside down and then when you pull on it, it'll spin and act like a recovering uh, wounded bait fish, uh, juvenile fish, whatever it may be. Um, I apologize for the lighting in this first in these first couple of videos um, till I can get them off, till I can get that squared away. Uh, I think it's decent right now, but I know it can be a lot better. I got a lot of shadows and everything, so I'm gonna try to get that squared away. But uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started on the tying on this to start. We're just going to go with the deceiver tail right on the back. And we're going to do this in a gray and white version. The one that I showed you was a little brown trout variation. Just get these thrown in uh, pretty close, pretty close. As you can probably hear, the dog is right next to the camera, so she's taking a little snap, a little, little nap. So you may wind up hearing her snore or something a little bit, who knows, but oh well, what can you do? First video in a new place. We're getting all bugs figured out. Um, next up, we're going to take just some silver and clear flash blue. Probably about five strands each, or maybe a little more. I didn't count them out. And we're just going to lay these right about the same length of the tail, uh, maybe slightly shorter. Hold them in just a little bit, and we'll run them on both sides. Oh, you got a tough life, don't you? So we'll just take these down both sides. I got a sand, and Zoom out just slightly here. I just checked the monitor. Um, that should work right there. Yeah, that'll do. I'm all out of sorts here. All out of sorts, but we'll get her squared away. Um, next up, we're going to tie in our wire. Uh, it's just brassy size silver and throw this in Create our dubbing loop for our body. Grab the dubbing tool. Looks like most of my shadows are. Keep checking the monitor here, making sure I don't have too many shadows. It doesn't look too bad, but we'll see what it looks like once I go through the editing. Hopefully, it's not too terrible and I can just figure it out with some. Maybe a key light or something. I don't know. If there's any lighting experts out there, feel free to chime in. But 
I'm just gonna take this uh, ice stub UV pearl. in a quick loop. Run this right to the front. Tie this off. Get my wire out of the way. Figure out what my tails are wanting to do. Um, next up, if I can figure out where I put it. set to the side but I guess it didn't. We're just gonna go with that's really long. Just gonna go with some gray schlappen. And what we're going to do next is just take a gray overwing and we're going to set this right over top. Set that over the top, grab a white marabou, and it's going to be on the bottom. And this is just going to fill us up, give us a little bit of bulk. A little bit more motion in the water. Get that out of the way, we'll trim this one off. And there it is, your back portion of the fly. Now, where things will start getting a little bit different is when we go tying this in in the front with our wire. And I'm gonna I'm gonna go through this on the I'm gonna explain this pretty well. And when it comes time to actually tying the wire in and everything, then I'll speed through it that way. We can cut down a little bit on our time for this one. Get that tail to where it's wanting to cooperate for us. But there's the back portion of it. The unique part about this fly, and I'm going to show you in a second what we're going to do, is the, the front hook, we're going to bend it. We're going to take just and throw a little bend in the front and it's not going to be a downward bend we're going to be off to the side so to do that I mean you could just take a regular Leatherman and probably bend this right now um, but what we're going to do we're just going to heat this up just take a regular old Bic and right about at the one third point on the way back just heat this up a little it's going to make it a lot easier to bend
No, don't start barking. New place has her all mixed up too, but I'll take this out of the vise and see how well you guys can see this. But this is all I did right here. I just took a quick bend. I don't know if that's what, maybe 15, 20 degrees. And I just bent it off to the side at the one third point. So now we're going to go in and tie in the articulation wire. And this one, we're not going to be able to speed through right off the bat because we do something a little bit different with this than we do on, or than I do or most folks do on the, on their articulated stuff. This one's going to be, it's going to have an offset, a 90 degree offset on the back hook. So this is how we tied it in. It's going to be tied in like this right here. And this is just imitating a wounded or injured fish is all this is. Now, in order to do this, you're going to have to bring your wire from the side and loop it this way, and then your wire is going to go on the side of this hook. So instead of the typical wire where your loop's going like this, your loop is coming around it. So this is a critical part to this fly to get that 90 degree bend, or your 90 degree offset. So you want to make sure that you run this right down the center or right down the center of the hook off to the side and bring it right past where your barb starts your starts to ascend now uh, where's my bead at there we got it so you're going to take your bead now and I can trim this up working with way too much So you're going to take your bead and run this through here. And I'll speed through some of this stuff. Uh, some of the stuff that really isn't all that important. Now, you can see how this is turned to the side where the white underbelly is sticking toward the camera. And you're just going to bring this right through here and bring your bead or bring your wire back through your bead and when you do this same thing with the distance as before um, you want the same amount of space between where your thread stops and your bead and your bead to the eye of the hook but you bring this right down this opposite side so not over top, not below, on the side. That way your loop will stay coming through it this way instead of going down over top and causing it to turn. This way we can keep our 90 degree offset. If you can see, right there's our hook pointing right at the camera instead of riding down. Now I would recommend taking like an eraser or something to keep you from running this hook through your finger, but I'm fresh out of erasers. So I'm probably gonna stab myself once or twice with it. We'll see.
ready for body material. Same thing, we're just using the ice dub UV pearl. And I don't get too concerned about the taper on this. Um, as long as it's in the ballpark, I'm usually pretty happy with it because a lot of the body winds up getting covered up by the marabou over wings that we're going to use. So you just take this, spin it in your dubbing loop, throw a half hitch, and I think I got too much material, but that's all right. We can cut it off. Stay out of my finger. just going to flop around. Yeah. One more back there. So you take this Just tie it off, we'll throw in our slopping. For our hackle. Alright, so as you can see, we stopped our stopped our body and started our slopping right before the bend in our hook. Okay. So now we're just gonna take these over wings, same thing as the back, and we're gonna throw these in and bring it right to where you left off with the other one. Go ahead and tie that off. And then a white for the underwing. right back up and we're set right there now well I really hope it turns out better with the lighting because it looks like I'm losing a lot of detail but anyhow like I said we'll see how it goes in the editing and see what we can do 
last up for this fly, we're going to take some gray deer hair. And I've already cleaned and stacked this. And right at the bend, so right where we bent our hook, right behind that is where we're going to tie this in. And then it's going to go, as always, when we're working with deer hair, between the point of the hook, and I know you can't really see it because it's covered up with a marabou, but between the point of the hook and the barb for your reference point. Get that all measured out. Give that a quick trim. There's your collar. Nice, good, sparse, or not, not sparse, but a nice, good, beefy collar. And then you can see this is where our bend's starting, right there, right where that little excess is. This little portion right here, it looks like the head of an elk hair. That's where our bend is going. So we're right, right where we need to be. Now we're going to grab, and this is difficult here, tying this in, um, because you're not going to want to spin the hair because we're going to go two tones. We're going to go gray on top and then white on the bottom. So in order to do that, tie this in a little differently than we would on a dungeon or a cougar or something like that. So you go loose wrap, another loose wrap, and then you just kind of pull this down to where you see it start to flare. Now if I would pull tighter on this, it would spin the rest of the way around, but we don't want that. So you just pull it to where it starts to flare. You get that little half moon and you just kind of peel this back and then go right in front of it. Now you can go back in between. And this is where we're going to tie in our white. We're going to use the same thread path to tie in our white. And this is just uh, bleached white uh, belly hair. that up a little bit and then like I said we're going to use the same thread path for the white that we did the gray and same thing loose wrap a little tighter then you can pull down and flare it Just kind of push this back with your fingers. Then we're going to do one more stack right in front of it. third one. Just starting to get the wedge, don't pull any tighter. That's all the more you want to go. Throw in our last little bit of deer hair here.
probably blocking the camera pretty good with my fingers, but I'm trying to make sure I get this without rushing the eye. So there you go. Just kind of peel all of this back. And then bring your thread right behind the eye. Go ahead and whip finish. Find my thread here without messing up the head of deer hair. Now, the other unique thing about this one is how it's trimmed. Um, the way we trim this one is different from the dungeons, the cougars. I'm going to take the side that's bent and I'm going to cut it almost flush. So I'm not going to put any bend in the razor blade or anything. We're going to start with our top section and we're just going to go right over top here. See if we can find our eye. So we're going to find the eye of the hook, get a nice curve. And like I'm saying for this one, I'm going to bring this up to where it's level with me so I can see it so I'm not turning my head this way to try and trim it. And what I'm going to do is just take this flush right back. take this out of the vise and point this toward the camera hopefully the lighting is good enough to where you can see it but this side's cut nice and flush this side is still nice and rounded so what this does is when you're pulling on this and because we have it bent this way it's gonna dive down right like this but like I said when you take the tension off of it and you're no longer pulling on it when it comes up to the surface it has a tendency to float like this. So it's going to float upside down and then you pull on it. It's going to dart down at that angle and with this cut. So we're going to throw this back in. And like I said, this thing looks very erratic, very just disjointed, like it's on its last leg about to die. And then when you pull on it, it's like it's its, it's last ditch effort to try and swim off and it just it is very very erratic in the water uh, very fun to fish you don't get a ton of strikes on it just because it's such a big fly but the ones that you do are extremely aggressive uh, the last thing we're going to do on this is throw in um, 
just some one of these seven millimeter uh, fire eyes. This is, minus a little bit of trimming and stuff that I still need to do on the, on the hair head, which maybe with the lighting being not ideal, maybe that's, maybe that's a good thing because uh, y'all can't see all my flaws in these flies, so maybe it's a good thing. Maybe I won't work on the lighting. Anyhow, long-winded pattern. Uh, it takes a little bit of time to tie, but like I said, it is a very, very fun. When you do get your, when you do get your eats on these, they are very aggressive, and they're coming into kill. So this is the finished wasted white girl. Uh, if you have any questions or comments on this, uh, as always, uh, shoot them to me in the comments, and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. But uh, thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you next week.